Hey, welcome to Barley and Hops. Hey, I wanted to take this opportunity on the precursor for this video to show you, look here, uh, this is an example of a still running, uh, we, and we did a close up of the exit port so you can see how your distillate should be coming out of the still. Uh, you know, con we, we get a lot of questions about, well, how do I know if my still is running right? And, you know, and I've searched all over the internet too, and, and most of the answers you get are, well, you'll know it when it happens. Well, that's not a good answer. Uh, so I figured, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. And here's a, a couple of pictures of just what it should look like when uh, your still is running, and it's running at its optimal. So you'll notice that there's, you know, drip, 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 spurt, drip, 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 drip spurt. And we also, we often um, use the analogy of the pencil lead. It's about as thick as a pencil lead, uh, but that's kind of hard to, to, to capture and wrap your mind around it unless you see it. So here it is, and now I hope that you've had an opportunity to see this, that uh, you know, it'll click and you'll go, now I got it. So without further ado, let's go right into our uh, video about equipment and some tips and tricks and things that I really think that you'll be interested in knowing. Welcome to Barley and Hops, I'm George. Today we're going to start we're talking about equipment. Uh, we're going to talk about equipment, uh, and a lot of times we do, we're still, we're still going to do videos on the process, on uh, ingredients, on tips and techniques, but today is a day that I'll get all excited about this because equipment, um, the, actually the basic still itself, we're going to talk about the 8 gallon model and the 15 gallon model, and I've got two of them here, and I've got a couple of variations I wanted to share with you. The first one I wanted to show you though was the, eight gallon, the 15 gallon model, and you'll notice that one here. Now, you know, believe it or not, I spend a lot of my time um, not trying to talk people out of a 15 gallon model, but trying to ensure that they understand the challenges that come along with a 15 gallon kettle. Uh, as opposed to the eight gallon kettle. I normally always recommend the eight gallon kettle uh, only because it's much more maneuverable, it's much more manageable uh, as opposed to the 15 gallon. You gotta be pretty serious. And trust me, if you're running a 15 gallon mo model, uh, we're, 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 we're doing, yeah, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> it, it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, look, here's the, it, the, the, the first reason, the main reason why I mentioned that about the 15 gallon model is because look at the head. This is where the thermometer is. So you've got to probably have a step ladder. If you've got this on top of a propane burner, you're going to have to use a step ladder just to get to the head to read the temperature. And I don't care if you're using a laboratory thermometer or if you're using the digital one. You're still going to have to reach way up there. So this thing is pretty tall. If you use the eight gallon model, it's really, really manageable and you can maneuver it a whole lot easier, but that's a whole lot of mass. And if you're using propane or you're using the heater bands, because it takes multiples, uh, or you're using heater elements that go inside, it takes multiples when you're like 15 gallons. Uh, that's a lot of mass, a lot of volume to heat up and also to cool down. So just consider that. Um, also stop and think about this, that most of us who are, may or may not be in that hobby, or usually using five to six and a half gallon buckets. So that's where you make your mash in. And so that's probably what you've got. And you pour that in an eight gallon still gives you plenty of headroom and things work out fine. Uh, but there's not many of us that are making multiple buckets like that or using bigger drums. Uh, they're out there, but just suffice it to say that uh, George would recommend an eight gallon for your 98% of us that are out there in the hobby just having a wonderful time. Okay. Now this is the pot reflux combination, and I wanted to show you this already assembled. And as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer, and we're going to go from, we're going to just cut off from about here down, so that uh, we can get a close up of what's going on up here, uh, so that you can see what we've got. So hang with me, and I'll get a close up, and uh, we'll get a really good idea of what's happening. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're a little closer now, so and please uh, ignore the dome in the back. Uh, this is a uh, copper dome, it's the Olympic dome on top of the Turbo 500, we've got one sitting there. Uh, you, it, this comes with a water control system, which is this portion and this portion, and some hoses. It comes with all the hoses that you need, it comes with a thermometer, and it also comes with an adapter that goes on the end of your hose that you can hook to the garden hose. It also comes with the submersible 560 gallon per minute water pump. And uh, this one, you just drop it in the bucket, 
hook your hose to this and plug it in and let her go. Uh, now you use a pump of this size only because of the length and the distance that you're trying to draw that water. Uh, you can use a smaller pump, but remember if you're using a smaller pump like a 250 gallon per hour, um, if you're using a smaller pump you're going to have to raise that water very, very high in order to pump across because uh, a smaller pump doesn't really want to pick it up from way down low and bring it that high up. It takes a lot of pressure, a lot of energy to do that. And these pumps are designed specifically for that, so they do it very, very well. And oh, by the way, if you need an extra pump, just, just call us and let us know. We'll, 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 we can ship one to you. Uh, it does come with a set of instructions. Now, I want to caution you about that. See these instructions? And we all admit that they're, they're pretty archaic. They, look, they've done a great job, uh, and they spent all of their time in craftsmanship putting this thing together. Uh, but the instructions are still working on them and we're going to come up with a really good set. So if you order it through us, uh, I'll send you a, a copy of this uh, via PDF, but I'll also send you some pictures because pictures speak a thousand words. All right, so you got all your hoses and connections and here's what happens. This is the water in. The water in, remember in a column, uh, if you're going to be on a condenser uh, of anyone, if it's going to be a pot still, if it's going to be a reflux still, whatever, your cold water always goes in the bottom. Uh, it's just sort of like a convention, you know, just like when you're driving down the road, you drive on the right and everybody else drives on the right going in the opposite direction. That's called a convention. Uh, if you're in Japan, it's opposite. But So the convention is, is that your cold water always goes in the bottom and your other water comes out the top. Uh, the same thing with the reflux. Your cold water goes in the bottom and there it is and it comes out the top. So keep that in mind. Now this is the hose, the in hose, that either goes to the pump here, and then you drop the pump in a bucket of ice water, or a big chest, I use a big 96, gal uh, 96 quart uh, ice chest, fill it with 30 pounds of ice and a bunch of water and just recirculate it. Or you can hook it to your garden hose and screw this into the garden hose slot. Then the water will go up here, now this is the control valve. The first thing we'll do is we'll have this thing turned off. So if it's turned sideways, it's off. If it's straight up and down, it's on. And your water will flow in here in the condenser. It'll go up through the condenser. It'll come back out to this T-valve. It goes right out this hose. Now this hose, you can extend it and run it around next to your plants or anywhere you want to. Or what I normally do is just stick it right back in the same bucket that the water's coming out of so that I'm recirculating that water. You're not wasting water that way. Now as you're... As the still comes up to temperature and you're going to know when that happens that's really believe it or not that's a topic for another video but when it does come up to temperature and you're ready to run the reflux itself you're going to turn the water on because it's going to split the water coming in here this water you don't care it, it just turn this on full blast and let it run through the condenser the one that you're really concerned with about adjusting is the water that goes through your reflux tubes and if it's running too fast well then, your vapors, are never, they never get hot enough, nor do they rise high enough in order to come through the condenser. If it's too low, well then, they never start to pre-condense and get any reflux action. So you, you kind of caught in that middle, so there's this beautiful balance that happens. And when this beautiful balance takes place, trust me, you're going to know it, because you're going to sit back with a smile on your face, and you're going to know that you're in balance. And you're going to balance that temperature by the, controlling the water flow. And the water flow is controlled ever so slightly by turning this knob little by little until you get the proper flow that goes in the bottom, comes out the opposite tube, it goes around here, it goes in this tube, then it'll come out the other side. It goes around this tube in here, goes through the column again, comes out here, goes through here, and then it comes out this last tube at the very top, and then it joins back at the T. Now at that T, it just goes right back out to your exit. So then that's one way of hooking it up. And believe it or not, this is the standard way of hooking it up. Now, are there other options? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're all smart out there. Let me tell you what I did. In one case, I removed the T. And I just ran one line from the exit straight to the bucket. And I ran one from the bucket and my pump straight to this one. I got a second pump. And I put that second pump right here on the bottom of the T-valve, or right on the bottom of my valve itself. So that way what I could do was I could turn on the pump and let it just start running. And then when I was ready for the reflux, I could turn on that separate pump and 
When I started to adjust ever so slightly, I was only adjusting one pump. And that was a pump that was dedicated for my reflux. So if you need an extra pump, just use an extra pump. And, and in this case, because the water flow is so small and so gentle, you really don't need that large 560 gallon per hour pump. You can use a smaller pump. But then you're also just adjusting one water flow instead of splitting the water flow here. So just food for thought. I mean, it's just an idea. It's a tip. It's not absolutely necessary. This works extremely well. The other way works extremely well. It's just all whatever makes you happy. Now, let's talk about something other briefly here. A three inch column versus a two inch column. Okay, this is the two inch column and that's the bottom portion of it. And this is the three inch column and they're both made the same way. <laughs> With the exception, this one's three inches, this one's two inches. They both have a screen on one end of them. And now you can put that screen on the bottom or you can put it on the top. And the, what the screen is there for is to prevent anything that you pack inside the column. And we're going to get to that. Anything that you pack inside the column from falling back down inside your kettle. You don't want that to happen. So I normally place it with my screen on top because I normally pack the top of the column. There are people that will pack the entire column. Just be very careful that you don't pack it in such a manner that your column starts to back up and it prevents your vapors from rising and you cause an increase in pressure. Uh, and that, that's when your still will start to spit and spurt and sputter and we actually call that puking. Uh, it'll start to do that uh, in, in worse, very worse, worse, worst case scenario, uh, you could have a blowout somewhere because your pressure just builds so much that you just can't seem to control it. Um, it's very, very un, uh, unusual uh, but it's, it's, it is also very, very possible. Two, two inch column, three inch column. Now, here's the way you look at this. Uh, and people ask me, uh, this will produce exactly the same quality as the two inch. And the two inch is going to produce exactly the same quality as the three inch. So there's no difference in quality. The difference is in time. Uh, and also quantity. It's going to produce whatever you put in that kettle. It's only going to produce that. Uh, so the only difference between these two is time and, of course, cost. This is going to cost you pff, roughly 20% more, 20 to 25% more uh, overall. But the difference is in time. A two-inch column, on average, will produce about ooh, maybe a quart, a little over a quart an hour. A three-inch column is going to produce a little over two quarts an hour, and I'll tell you why. It all has to do with the cubic inches available inside the column itself. Now, we're not going to go through it and do any math, but the formula for that is pi r square. Um, you know, 3.15409, something like that. Pi r squared, pi times the radius squared. And in this particular case, um, this is a 3.14, a two inch column is 3.14 cubic inches uh, inside. So, if you go up by one inch, you go up by one inch, you wind up with 6.28 cubic inches. And so 6.28 cubic inches, if you divide that by 3.14, it's actually a little over two, just tiny, it's like two. So you're actually producing twice as much by going up one inch. So you can do the math, pi r squared. Let's say you went to a four inch column. You figure it out. What are the cubic inches involved in that? And then work that out towards your time. Okay, so oh well, yeah, I wanted to show you that. And now it also comes with the chemical resistant hose. And this is the flexible chemical resistant hose that would go from the end of your condenser into your collection jar or into the end of the parrot and then from the parrot into your collection jar. So keep that in mind. That's a nice little piece to have. It's almost, in, uh, you can't, just can't do without it. All right, your water pump also comes with a larger half inch diameter hose or barb that goes here. So if you want to use a half inch uh, or a I mean, sorry, a five eighths, a five eighths inch hose, you could do that as well. But this one's the standard half inch. So there shouldn't be any questions about this one. This is the eight, the 15 gallon pot reflux combination, three inch column with a digital thermometer on top, all connected and put together. So, um, I would ask you what are your questions, but I'm sure you've got plenty of time. Please, just let us know what your questions are. Uh, give us a call. Uh, you know the number, 254-681-1760. And our history, our track record is we'll either answer the phone when you call, or if you leave a message, we will call you back. 
uh, drop us a line. We'll answer that. Uh, you can get in touch with us on barleyandhopsbrewing.com. Uh, go to our contact form and, and submit that. And oh, by the way, you know, if you hit that, it'll say it won't go. It's going. I get people that'll send it five or six times, and they, each one of them show up. I don't mind. I'll, I'll still answer it. So, until next time, happy brewing. <laughs>